Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn around to someone. Just tell them he's still on the throne. He, he is still, still on the throne. Thank you, Lisa. He is still on the throne. What an incredible God we have. What, what an incredible thing to, to know God in our life and to be able to experience him. And, and I've got some things I want to share with you tonight, but, but I want you to know this is not a, a, a teaching as much as it is a stirring and, 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 and should stir us up. It should, should propel us forward and, and, and challenge our thinking and, and, and stir us up in our life. You know, last week we talked a little bit on, on, on prayer and the importance of prayer. And afterwards, um, I, I think it was Doug came up and gave me, gave me this. Was it Doug or Judy? One of you, Judy gave it to me this time. They're, they're incredible people that come up after, after service. They'll come up and they'll give me, hey, I wrote this a while back. And it was like, it was like my, it was the theme of my message. Or, and Judy came up afterwards and gave me this little card that says, pray really big, believe even bigger. Pray really big, believe even bigger. We talked last week about the importance of of having, having a prayer that, that, that reflects the greatness of our God. And we, we read out of 1 John chapter 5, and I just want to read those two verses to you again. In verse John chapter 5, just listen, please. In verse 14, it says, This is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. Is that incredible or what? And just reading that verse this week has really challenged me on asking not just for more stuff from God, um, but to understanding that, that when we go to God and ask that he wants to answer our prayers and he wants to put big prayer requests in us. You ever heard someone say, well, that was a, you know, that was a little miracle. We had a little miracle on the way. And if God's moving, there's no little when God's involved. Everything is enormous. Everything is incredible. Everything is amazing when, you're, when you have God working in our lives. And so, so if we're going to believe for, for, for miracles, let's just live, leave off the, the little or big, and let's just believe God for miracles along the way. Because Jesus says, it's no harder for me to, 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 to say to, to, for you to, to the lame, get up and walk, than it is to forgive you of your sins. And so... The, the, it's not hard with, things aren't hard for God. And so we need to get this mentality, this, this understanding stirring on the inside of us. It's okay for unnamed saints to ask incredible things from the almighty God. It's okay for, for people like you and me that aren't necessarily celebrities in the church world to ask God to do incredible things in our lives. That to, if you're not smiling, slap yourself and just put a smile on it. So then I started praying and thinking, seeking God, what do you want to share? You want me to continue on prayer tonight? And I started praying about what to do there. And, and, and I want to talk a little bit tonight and stir us up just like last week. Everything I shared is incredible. You could, you could finish every verse I started last week. And tonight I'm sure that most of the verses, if not all of them, you'd be able to finish. But I want to stir us up in the the practical, the, the, the application. Sometimes we slip away from those things we know we should be doing. Just like prayer. We all know we should pray, amen? And we all know we should pray more, amen? Eh, but we don't pray. But, but we just need to start to do some of these things. So I'm here to just encourage you. Say it's okay to pray. It's okay for you to pray amazing things that God wants to accomplish in your life. But tonight, for a few moments, I want to talk to you about what many call the highest, highest level of prayer. I want to just jump to the, just, just go to the advanced course. I want to talk about the highest level of prayer. And the highest level of prayer is praise. Praise is the highest level of prayer. It incorporates a clarification and a, and a, defin, and a, and a defining of who he is and a releasing of personal faith. And who he is. So when I was looking at that card. It says pray really big. And believe even big, bigger. I just changed it a little bit. I hope it's okay Judy. I changed it a little bit. Just to pray really big. And praise even bigger. This is why I say it. Would you all agree with me. That prayer is an important subject in the Bible. 
do you realize that the Bible talks more about praise than it does prayer? And if I'm not doing enough praying, I'm probably not doing enough praising. And I need to get Dennis, and I'm trying to keep it in first person tonight, but, but if it fits, go ahead. I need to get praising God more than just trying to pray more to get God to move. If I'm not careful, my, I become a person of prayer that is only focused on the problem and the need, where praise starts to get focused on the God, the one I am talking to along the way. And I start to praise him that he is the Lord God, my healer. I start to, to, to praise him with songs that we just sang, that no matter what's going on, my God is still on the throne. Have you ever had a day where you thought, how am I going to get through this day, Lord? God, if one more bad thing happens to me, I don't know what I'm going to do. And if you kick yourself and turn it around and say, God, you're still on the throne. God, I don't care what happens to me. You haven't changed. You're still going to get me through this day. I'm still going to be more than an overcomer. Just throw something else at me and I'm going to praise God anyway along the way because of who my God is. And what happens to you all of a sudden? There seems to be a, a, an igniting on the inside of you. There's a, a holy courage that comes up on the inside of you. You start to look at those problems different, not just, boy, one more thing's going to put me over. You start saying, just throw another one on me. My God is able to put me through. Just go ahead. One more person criticize me. That's okay. It's just the flesh because I'm secure in my God's love for me. And I'm going to think his love is everlasting in my life. I know my faults and my failures. I could cuss me out better than you because I know my problems. But my God still loves me and still going to get me through the problems in life along the way. And when I start to turn it around to God, don't let one more bad thing happen to me. To turn it around to start, I'm going to praise God anyway. I'm going to glorify him along the way. My praise is going to be continued continual coming out of my mouth something I don't I can't explain it I'm just saying it works if we do it so as much as we need to pray and we need to pray and as much as we need to pray more and we do need to pray more and as much as we need to pray bigger prayers I want you to know we need to praise even more in our lives we have reduced praise down to some songs that we like or make us feel good instead of making confident declarations of the greatness of the God that we are serving. Let's look at just a couple of verses tonight. Just pull this apart and just start to see this in our lives, just how important praise is. This isn't so much a teaching, this is much as a stirring. And I need some amens tonight. If you're falling asleep, it'll keep you awake. If you, you know, nothing else. But we need to, we we need to pray big, but we need to praise even bigger in our lives. I hear too many people say, "I don't feel comfortable praying in public." If you can't pray in public, I'm wondering what your praise life is in public. Do we pray, do we bring praise just to church service, or is it a lifestyle? Is it a way we live? If you squeeze me, do you get a praise Jesus out of me or something else out of me? The Bible talks more about praise than it, than it does prayer, so I think we need to make sure that we're focusing on who we're worshiping and the praise that comes out of us. Both of these are, can, are in the Bible are talked about, but they're to be continual. We're supposed to pray without, you know these verses, don't you? You know it, you're responsible for it, Amen. And the Bible talks us about that we're supposed to have, out of our mouth, is supposed to continually flow the sacrifice of praise out of us, which is a river of living water. It comes out of us. Continually. Both prayer and praise is supposed to be what's coming out of our mouth all the time. Huh? I said, it'll keep you awake or something. Amen. It's what comes out, 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, you can write this down, or, or we have some of these verses up, up top tonight because of lack of time, but I want to get the, the word in front of you. 1 Thess, uh, Thess, Thessalonians, it's supposed to be 1 Thessalonians, I'm sorry, I believe it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says, uh, be unceasing and persistent in prayer, the Amplified Translation says. Paul says, be, be, con, be persistent 
and unceasing in your prayers. That means something's going to try to push your prayer life down. Something's going to try to get you to stop praying, but you've got to be persistent. You've got to be persistent along the time. I want you to sometimes in our praise, you've got to be persistent sometimes too. Sometimes you don't feel like praising God. I, how do I know that? Because you're human. Sometimes I don't feel like praising God. There's times I don't feel like lifting my hands, but the Bible says lift holy hands into heaven without wrath, wrath or doubting. Well, pastor, I just don't feel comfortable lifting my hands to heaven. Persist. You're going to persist or you're going to resist? What are you going to do? Persist. Well, what will people think of me if I raise my hand? Well, what are they thinking about you coming to church on Wednesday night anyway? You might as well give them something to think about along the way. What do they think about? They're going to think, well... That person must love Jesus. Wow, that person's willing to raise their hand in front of everybody and, 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 and make their body do something to glorify God who was willing to send his body in the form of his son to die for us and raise his hands on something called a cross. Amen. That's right. Worship in our life is so important. In Psalm 34, verse 1, Psalm 34, verse 1, the King James, the good old King James, is all right if we still read King James in the house, isn't it? King James in Psalm 34, verse 1 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. Probably we should say, oh me on that one, huh? Psalm 34, verse 1, that's Old Testament. They ain't even saved yet. Jesus didn't die on the cross from them yet. Holy Spirit didn't live in them yet. That God didn't demonstrate his great love for them like he has for us yet. And, and yet the psalmist says, I, I, not I'm not I'm going to pay a worship leader to do it. Not I'm going to get a CD to do it for me. Not I'm going to watch a DVD to do it. Not I'm going to watch Christian TV to do it. I'm going to get up and do it. I'm going to get up and do it. I'm going to get up and do it. When am I going to do it? I will bless the Lord at all times. When I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it. When it don't look good, I'm going to do it. When, when, I, when I get a bonus, I'm going to do it. And when I get bounced, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it when I feel it, when I get a good report from the doctor, and when I get a bad report from the doctor. I still will bless the Lord at all times. It goes on and says here, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. What you got in your mouth? What, what, what do you have? What are you chewing on lately? What's in your mouth? You can't have it unless you put it there. Continually, I'm going to praise him. Continually, I'm going to praise him. At all times, I'm going to praise him. Pastor, we get it, go on. No, we ain't got it yet because we're still sitting here just kind of thinking about it. Right now, we ought to be jumping. Yeah, I'm, this is a time. Why aren't we jumping, dancing, and shouting, and praising? Well, we're listening to Pastor talk. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be on my mouth. Listen, as it goes on, it, it, we, should spend, we should spend more time praising the Lord than just asking God for more. And yet we should be asking God for more. And when we ask God for more, it gives us more reasons to praise him. It gives us more reasons to exalt his name. It gives us more reason to, to declare him and that our focus is on, not on the problem, our focus is on the presence of the Almighty in our lives. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to the Lord who is with me. He said he'd never leave me nor forsake me. I'm going through life. I'm not just talking to the God that's off in heaven somewhere, but the God that is living right here with me. The Almighty is with me. The Lord is with me. We sang them songs about how he is an all-consuming fire in my life, and he's going to be my guard, and he's going to take care of me. He is my provider. He's going to watch over my heart. He is my, he's leading and guiding me. He's the good shepherd that's right there with me. So we can continually have this praise. If nothing else, the fact that he said he wants to stick with us should give us reason to praise him in life. Our praise should him. Our praise should flow out of us for him. It, our praise should be, be focusing on him as, as, as his creation. Listen, in, in Psalm 145, verse 10, Psalm 145, verse 10, you can write down the reference. 
These are good verses. You might even look them up after you go home and think about it. You might even memorize these this week and just be focusing on this. Psalm 145 verse 10 says, All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people exalt you. All your works praise you. If you're close to someone, just turn to them, look at them, say, you're, you're a work. You're a work. You're a real work. We're a work. We are part of God's work. Huh? We are his creation. He worked. He breathed into us the breath of life. This is not just talking about heaven. This is not just talking about the angels. This is talking about all of us here. We are his work and he has created us and we should praise him. He didn't create us because he needed more praisers. He didn't create us and then say, I'm going to make you praise me. But because of who he is and because we're aware of who he is, it says even the rocks would cry out in worship and praise to him. If I'm as dumb as a rock, I still should have the sense to be able to praise him in life because I realize who he is. He is my creator. And I, I, I want to worship him. I want to praise him. I want to exalt him along the way. I want to praise the Lord. I want to, I want to, I want to. I just need to. I need to let it flow out of my mouth. I need to have it come from the, from the meditation of my heart and the thoughts that I have towards God that flow out of me. Listen to me. Uh, it, it's the praise that we should have is, is I just wrote three quick things down and I'll see if I can get them in in 10 minutes here. Three quick things. Our praise, our praise should be on purpose. Our praise, you should never say, oh, I didn't mean to say praise the Lord. Our praise should be on purpose. I'm praising him not just out of a little habit that I have, that I just, a cliche that it comes out of me once in a while but it's an overflow of my heart. I praise him because, he, he's, because I know him. I praise him as an act of my will on purpose. He could have made it so that if you don't praise him, you'll have consequences. But he created us and said, I want you to praise me. I, I want you to praise me because you know who I am and what I have done for you. I want you to praise me on purpose. Not just out of religious tradition. Not just on Sunday morning service. Not just on Wednesday night. Not just when, when you need me to do something or maybe you got an extra raise. I want you to praise me because of the relationship that we have. Again, you can write this verse down. It's in verse, it's easy to remember. Psalm 111 verse 1. So it's Psalm 1, 1, 1, colon, 1. Psalm 111, verse 1. And listen to this. It simply says, praise you the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. I don't leave anything out. As I was meditating on these simple verses today, if we're not careful, we, we, we've, we've said it before, if we're not careful, we try to get cheerleaders up front to get us to worship. Come on now, let's worship the Lord. Come on, let's praise him a little bit. Come on, here, think about this. Come on, here we got a couple songs. See if one of them likes you or you like it. The scripture says here, I'm going to praise the Lord. I, I, I don't need a cheerleader. I'm, I'm thankful we have a great worship leader. I'm thankful for the worship team that we have. But folks, this is not the only time I do my, my, my praising. This is not the only time that, that I exalt the Lord in my life. And it shouldn't be and can't be for you either. But we got to do it on purpose. We do it on purpose. Most of the times we sin on purpose, right? Very few times do we kind of slip into it and how did I get here? We know how we got here. We planned that trip out real well. How do we get there? It's on purpose. Praise should be a purposeful thing in our life, too. We should wake up in the morning just amazed. I've told you, my feet do not hit the floor until my heart has been in heaven for a throne room for a time. I will not get out of that bed in the morning. I will not face this day. I will not face the responsibilities of a day 
without first of all acknowledging God and who he is and his greatness. I don't start off with a prayer request. I go into God's presence and I worship him before my feet ever touch the floor and start into my day. I do it on purpose. I've trained myself to do that. I will, that, that is an act of my will along the way. So it must be purposeful in the way we live. It must be also, it must be personal. I alluded it to it there, but, but, but we, we read it in Psalm 34, verse 1. It says, I will bless the Lord. It's got to be personal. It's an act of my will, yes, and, and I decide to do it. I get to do it. I must do it. I want to do it. I crave to do it. I will bless the Lord. I tell you, there's nothing more amazing than getting alone in the presence of God. Nobody else around. Just you and God and just worshiping him. Just praising him. Nothing, nothing more incredible than leaving the radio off in the car and just driving down the road. Just worshiping God and miles go by and you think, how did I even get here from where I was? Worshiping him. Well, Pastor, I don't know if I can do that. You know how to worry for miles. Huh? You know how, how to be fearful for miles. You know how to be dread, dreadful for miles. We need to just get our focus back. And I will. It's purposeful. It's personal. It must be personal. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will do it. I will do it. And I will not wait for someone else to stir me or for an angel to do it for me. I don't have to wait for you to stir me up to be able to worship and to praise the almighty God in my life. I don't have to wait for an angel and an angelic choir to show up to make me feel spiritual enough to be able to praise the Lord. I don't know about you. I, I'm not, I, it's not that I don't like mornings. I just wish they were later in the day. Um, it, it, and, and, and so waking up in the morning is in my flesh. It, it's not, oh, praise the Lord, jump out of bed and let's hit the day. It's like, okay, Lord. There's another day, so I get into his presence and change my attitude before I even start into the day by worshiping him. It's an act of my will. The third thing I just want to remind us real quickly is my praise has to be a perpetual in nature. We talked about it. We alluded to it already earlier. When do we praise the Lord? Doesn't that make it simple? All the time. Doesn't that make it simple? That it's not just on good days or holy days or, or, or uh, always. It's not just when people like me or, or even when I'm having a problem, but always. I will bless the Lord. It's perpetual. It, it, it is continual. It, 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 it's like breathing. It's, it's what I must do all the time it, to, it, it, to live and to breathe and, and to have his presence. It, it, it's what I have to do. My feelings might change. My moods might change. My problems might change. My friends might even change. But there's an almighty God who will never change. And because of that, my praise to him does not change. My God's not moody. My God does doesn't, doesn't change friends and, and unfriend me some days because he didn't like something that I did or something I just encountered in life. My God, his love is unchangeable in my life and what he wants to do and who he is. And so my praise for him must be perpetual. I will continually worship the Lord. And I want you to know that sometimes... I'm not saying every time, but sometimes you don't need to pray about something. You need to start praising your way out of it. We can go through all the Bible. Paul and Silas were in prison and their chains and their backs were beaten and all those things. You know the story. And at midnight they prayed and sang praises. And then there was the earthquake. And then they were set free. Sometimes we get stuck so much in the prayer mode, we don't get over to the and sang praises. And we don't get deliverance until we get to the and sang praises. What prison are you in right now that you need to stop praying about and you need to start praising God about? Because he's with you even in that prison situation. Sometimes our prayers sound like God isn't even with us. Some, let's be honest, folks. Sometimes our prayers are just complaining. Huh? 
Sometimes they're just complaining. And we need to get over here into the praising. And let that continually start to flow. Yeah, things aren't good right now, but my God is good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going through some problems right now, but my God is with me. And he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. But, but, but even if I never get out of this situation, I'm still going to praise my God in the midst of this situation. The perpetual praise that must flow out of our mouth is, is declared on who God is. It's, it's, he's worthy of our praise and it's an everyday way of life for us. Hebrews 13, 15. Hebrews 13, 15. I'm running out of time here. Jeez, we got good halfway through it tonight. Hebrews 13, 15. These are all verses that you know. What does the scripture tell us? This is the Amplified. It says, through him, therefore, let us, let an act of my will, us, every one of us, make the choice and decision to do it. Let us at all times perpetual praise along the way. These three things. Let us at all times offer up to God a sacrifice of praise. Too often we've talked about sacrifice of praise. Yeah, I didn't feel like it, so I offered it up as a sacrifice to the Lord. I tell you what, I was so depressed, but I still said praise the Lord. Things were really bad, but I offered it up as a sacrifice to praise. Now, how do you think that would have looked in the Old Testament if someone would have came in and said, I got an old goat here, it's about half dead, but I'm going to sacrifice it anyway. Huh? I got one of this one sheep, you know, it, it just keeps walking in circles. There's something wrong with it, but I'm going to sacrifice it to the Lord anyway. No, they brought their best. In those days that we don't feel like praising the Lord, that's all the time we, again, we go take a shower, get dressed up like you're going to church and have church right where you're at. And I'm going to offer up the sacrifice of praise. It ain't going to be some half dead thing and I don't feel like it. I'm going to say for feelings, you need to get out of the way because I got some praising to do right here. Sit your mind, get out of the way because I'm going to praise God like I'm out of my mind for just a little bit right here. I hope no one, no one calls the cops on me, but I'm going to worship the Lord like, like he's almighty. And things are going to look a little strange for a little bit, but that's okay. Why is it that sitting there in a, in a chair in the dark with a half of a can of beer and a cigarette that's burning through the, the couch, that's okay. But you getting up and worshiping God with all of your heart, people think you might be crazy. Let's offer the, let's offer the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of my lips. Thanking, acknowledging, confessing, and glorifying his name. Wow. Didn't say anything about your situation changing there, didn't it? Didn't say anything about your feelings changing there, did it? Didn't say, well, if you start to praise God, then you're going to feel better and everything's going to look better. No, it's all about him. It's not about some miracle drug that's going to change you instantly in your life. It is a declaration of my will that I'm going to do regardless of what's happening to me in life because my God never changes. And praise belongs to him. My goodness, we could go through it and if we had the time tonight, and I know, I know you need to go, but think about it for just a few moments. We pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray that, don't we? What's going on in heaven? Praise was going on in heaven before the earth was even created. There are creatures that have been created that circle the throne that sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come, that do that all the time. And they never get tired of saying it. Pastor, sometimes we sing some of those songs so many times. Well, folks, it ain't about the song. It's about the one we're worshiping. And it isn't even a song. It, it's, it's an overflow of an attitude. It's, it's a presence. And, and those creatures were created that all, the day long forever and ever they're circling that throne holy 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 lord god almighty who was and who is and who is to come and and if you back up just a little bit then you got the the super spiritual ones that are in heaven the 24 elders that are constantly just give me a chance give me a chance give me a chance and they're falling down on their face and they're throwing their crowns before the feet of, of the of the lamb and, and worshiping him and if you back up just a little bit more it talks there in revelation about the angelic choir that kicks in and all of a sudden it sounds like the thunder 
thunders, of the pales of thunder that are going on and the rushing mighty wind of uh, 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 falls of water because of this angelic choir that is worshiping God perpetually in heaven. And we say, Lord, thy will be done on earth that is as it is in heaven. I think we need to be acting a little bit more like heaven is in our life than consumed with what we're going through in this life where we're just simply saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is in the center of my life, that I'm willing at any time in front of anyone to bow down and worship the Lord God Almighty. And I don't care what I sound like because I want others to drown me out, but to make a noise, to make a noise, a loud noise of worship. I'm not intimidated by who's listening to me. I'm not held back by what they might say about me. I don't care if it looks like we're getting a little out of sorts and we're a little loud in service. Folks, in heaven, things get loud. And it's not church arguments. It's not church fighting. What do they get loud about? We get to worship God. We get to worship God. But then there's a special group. I'm going to close with this. There's the four creatures. There's the angelic choir. But there's only a group that can sing the song of the redeemed. There's only a group of you and me's that can say that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. No angel can sing that song. The four amazing creatures, they can't sing that song. There's only a group of us. And I just wonder, when us get to heaven and we're in that atmosphere, just how radical, passionate, ridiculous, contagious is your worship going to be? I don't know about you. There's some days I'm wondering, do I get to make it? I'm, I'm believing I'm going to make it. But, but some of us wake up, man, we made it. That ought to be great. That ought to be great right there. That's a good day. You wake up in heaven. Good day. But then you start to realize, hey, this isn't about that I get to go to heaven and where's my mansion. I get to worship God. And angels, quiet down a little bit with your wings because I get to sing the song of the redeemed me by his blood he loved me that much and he did that so I can be here to praise him why do we have to wait till we get there to praise him like that why do we have to wait till we leave this place and get around that atmosphere our praise should be massive contagious, a fixed habit in our way of living, a full-time occupation, or we could just say a way of life. Folks, I want you to pray really big, and I want you to praise even bigger in your life. I want it to be continually coming out of your mouth. Your mouth has no space for fear, for doubt, for, for backbiting, your, your mouth has no space for those words because you're continually worshiping the Lord. And I want you to know when we continually worship the Lord, it is one of the best remedies for doubt in our life. One of the best remedies for doubt is praise. And start to worship him. Father God, these are all things we know. Father God, these are all things that we've been taught. But we've allowed the emotions of our day, the feelings of our body, the difficulty of this life to draw our focus away from you. So we repent and we change our direction. And we are going to be people who are known for the praise that comes out of our lives. 
We thank you that you're giving a revelation on how to even develop our prayers that they flow out as praise to you in all that we do. Teach us these things, these spiritual things. Reveal them to us. Stir them deep within us. Haunt us with these verses so that we change the way that we live to bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name.